Within Iceland is a towering stratovolcano often visible from the capital city of Reykjavik. It is not located on the Reykjanes Peninsula or even to the east, but instead on a completely separate peninsula to the northwest. There, despite not having erupted in 1800 years, is the Snæfellsjökull volcano, which has strongly changed the surrounding landscape during the last 10,000 years. During that time span, 223 square kilometers have been covered by its lava flows, including two-thirds of the peninsula section I have outlined in white. Several towns and villages are located on these young lava fields, which could be affected if Snæfellsjökull was to ever erupt again. As, not only has Snæfellsjökull been erupting intermittently for a whopping 800,000 years, but even during the last 10,000 years it has experienced intervals between two eruptions as long as 2,500 years in length. In other words, the 1800-year period of relative inactivity at the present is not necessarily an outlier here. And, these eruptions can widely vary from highly explosive eruptions with pyroclastic flows to completely effusive flank eruptions. You might notice that Snæfellsjökull, along with two other active volcanoes, are somewhat strangely located far outside the volcanic chains in the country, which can all be directly traced to either active divergent plate boundaries and extensions thereof, or microplates. So, why does this region, which is known as Snæfellsnes, volcanic zone exist? We actually do not know for sure, so here is one theory. Since Iceland began forming 18 million years ago, the Iceland hotspot has been stationary, but the crust overlying it has been largely moved towards the northwest. The hotspot has throughout its existence created volcanic chains which progressively get younger to the southeast. Chains are active for several million years before they jump to the southeast. In the case of the Snæfellsnes Peninsula, it was the site of one such active volcanic chain between 15 and 7 million years ago. However, this chain subsequently jumped further to the southeast, leaving behind a zone of weakness in the crust. The current three volcanoes seem to run almost perfectly perpendicular to these zones, suggesting that they are related to a seemingly reactivated path of least resistance in the crust. Also, in the case of Snæfell's Jökull, note how its longest snow-covered axis perfectly parallels the extinct rift zone. Snæfellsjökull as a whole is composed of a mixture of low silica and high silica lavas, specifically basalt, trachyte, and rhyolite. Basalt was the primary composition of this volcano for most of its 800,000 year lifetime, which for much of its history produced explosive summit eruptions alongside numerous effusive flank eruptions. As the volcano grew in height, its underlying magma chamber underwent fractional crystallization, allowing for occasional trachyte and then rhyolite eruptions to occur. These more explosive eruptions almost solely originated from Snæfell's Jökull's summit and at one point likely created a cryptodome. This cryptodome eventually uplifted so much rock that a section of the volcano dramatically collapsed to the northwest, creating a massive debris avalanche and leaving behind a 2.5 km wide collapse scarp. Some of these rhyolitic and trachyte eruptions may even have reached a volcanic explosivity index of a 3 or a 4, but exact figures for recent eruptions are scarce in recent literature. Eruptions which occurred during glacial periods underneath thick ice sheets created thick toyas and ridge-like tinders, with the most notable of these involving a several kilometer ridge to the east of Snæfellsjökull's summit. It appears that Snæfellsjökull, since widespread glaciers slowly began melting away 21,000 years ago, has experienced an increase in amount of eruptive activity. This activity continued during part of the last 10,000 years, creating between 10 and 12 flank and summit eruptions which covered 223 square kilometers in a layer of basaltic lava. One individual eruption covered 41.5 square kilometers, while another eruption traveled 10.2 kilometers down the slope. Today, you can view the many cinder and spatter cones along with subglacial volcanic features of this volcano within Snæfellsjökull National Park.